Yeah, we're going to do a garden tour today. Uh, just wanted to kind of give you guys an update. Uh, for newer people, we just started in the backyard. And you, if you, since you don't know if you're new here, that uh, the backyard is Coda's yard. That's my dog. Uh, beautiful German Shepherd. Hey, puppy. He's right there. Get it. Get him. Hi. Hey, Coda Bear. So this is his yard, so there's not going to be too much pretty stuff in here, but I had to show some of these plants uh, that I still have back here. So this is a hydrangea that was given to me. It was a piece of hydrangea that was given to me about 10, I don't know, about 10, 12 years ago by my best friend. And so uh, we both shared plants and stuff like that. And so she had this piece and it's massive and it's beautiful and it's always giving. And I love it. This is the old macrophylla. And so this blooms on old wood. Um, <clears throat> and I'm get blues off of this one. Uh, I have mostly alkaline. Is it alkaline or acidic? I don't remember. But, you know, I have to look it up every time when I'm trying to change colors on my hydrangeas. But anyway, this is old macrophylla. It's beautiful. And I absolutely love it. It did. Me and Sydney cut this down hard last year and the year before. Um, and then next to it, it looks, it looks, it looks a mess, but this is a limelight. So it got damaged in the storm. We, I have a lot of broken limbs on there, but I had to cut it back very, very hard because it had, it had gotten huge. Uh, and so as you can see right here, I had to tape it so my husband could, could cut that with the actual saw. Um, it'll come back better next year this year i'm getting some good growth but as you can see the storm completely demolished uh some of these limbs on here so uh i'm not but i'm not worried about it it's just going to fluff back out and hopefully i can keep it at this height so it looks like it's probably not going to get too much taller than right here so i think that's about four and a half five feet so that's about uh right where i want it but as you can see the trunks are huge um I really didn't think it would be that thick and it would be a huge tree like that. I really didn't. I looked at the thing and said six feet and mine is probably eight. Um, there's nothing in the back, so we're not going to go there. But we're going to go to the little honey, though. So walk with us. I don't know where Coda went, but he has deserted us because he sucks. <laughs> so little honey is a tree that I got from Plant Delights Nursery in uh, Cary, North Carolina. Uh, that's right outside the Research Triangle uh, of the Raleigh-Durham area. And uh, if you ever get a chance, you need to go by there because that garden is magnificent and they have the greatest plants. But anyway, little honey is like sun. You know, you think of hydrangeas, especially oak leaves, and they usually want shade, deep shade or dappled shade or dappled sun, I guess you could say. And uh, so this one, the plumes or the blooms or the buds, they start off kind of white, go to a green, and then they die off in, in like a little rosy color. Uh, this thing is huge. I don't think it was supposed to, supposed to be this big. It usually says six feet. This one was about seven. And we're standing up on something, so. But I love this. And the more sun it gets, the better, the, the brighter the leaves get. If it, the more shade it gets, you'll get that little brown, reddish tinge on there. And it's not damage or uh, mold or mildew. It's just that it doesn't like the shade that much. So the more sun it gets, uh, and we've been shady, you know, quite a bit uh, lately. We've been getting a lot of storms, a lot of cloud cover, so it's not going to be great. Yeah, just wanted to show you these few plants. Um, well, let me see. We're going to walk the path, Coda's path. I know, watch yourself. Please don't trip because I'll start laughing. <laughs> so here's Coda's path to go to the front yard. So I have uh, two lace caps through here. Um, I used to have three, but my husband has a whole bunch of crap up under the uh, deck. So he's, it's basically smushing one, but it's still alive because uh, hydrangeas are awesome. Uh, the lace cap is like an old macrophylla. It grows on old wood. So here's the old stem, right? And then the growth comes from the old stem. 
And so you say, oh, well, that's new growth. Yeah, but it's coming from the old stem. Okay. So it's, it is literally growing from the old growth from last year. I do want to say that with the hydrangeas, that even if you cut a hydrangea down, an old macrophylla down to the ground, you're still going to get leafing out. It's still going to be a beautiful shrub. You're just not going to have that many blooms. So sometimes if you feel like something's overgrown or you have to uh, move it, you have to do whatever, it gets damaged, whatever the case may be, and you have to cut it down, you haven't killed the plant if you have to cut it back. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do, okay? So now we're going to go up front. Okay, so now we're up front. Hopefully my neighbors don't look at me like I've lost my mind. So this is an oak leaf just like the little honey, except this one doesn't like any sun. It's in a full shade area. This one is about um, 18 years old. And so we've been in this house about 21 years. So yeah, that's about right. And if you look, I have a million babies up under there. So I literally could dig these up and have separate plants. So which will probably happen this fall. I'll start digging up all those because they have roots. But what happened was, and I've explained this before, if you lay down a hydrangea's limbs or branches onto the ground, put, them, put some soil on top of it and then a brick, you will get another, another plant. So I have all these freebies. So I just love this plant. It's just, it's just awesome. You start off with like a white creamy plume and flowers. And then you get green. And then these die back to red. I don't know if that's the bad ladybug family, but beetle family, but he's a, uh, he's different. <laughs> and so this was really hydrangea row. I used to have hydrangeas all the way down, but my husband, so we're just going to leave that alone. So back here is another old macrophylla that's growing pretty good this year. Usually it suffers back here. And I just noticed he cut down a tree. Oh my God. I'm so proud of him. Okay. <laughs> you can keep that. So this is old macrophylla. Y'all know what, the, what it does. It's doing pretty good this year. Usually it suffers, but I think I'm gonna have to move that because that's not a good spot for it. Uh, it gets really dry there because I'm on a slope. If you come down this way, widen that out. Yeah, look at that. This is a red tip or red limb. You see how that's a darker red through there? And don't ask me what color this becomes. I keep forgetting. Is that the purple? <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> this is uh, one that grows on new wood. Or new growth, I'm sorry. Not new wood, new growth. So this one I can cut back it every year. Um, don't ask me what it is. But it's a hydrangea, we know that. <laughs> Let's go over here. Oh my goodness. This is a big old dogwood. We're gonna have to cut this thing down. You might want to widen back some. I don't know if people can see the age on this tree, but it's been here since we've been in the house. So before we were in this house, it was already here. So uh, there's a huge hole in the bottom, in the trunk of the tree. Uh, you see it from here? No, we don't need to see it. You don't have to. There's a whole bunch of ivy over there, poison ivy. Uh, and so we're going to have to cut down this tree this fall. I really don't want to. It's still living, but it's half dead. So we're going to have to do something about that. Okay. Let's come over here to all the new stuff. So here's where the fun stuff of the garden starts happening. So yes, I do need to uh, cut off that piece on the hellebore, but I'm not doing it today. But uh, I just, that hellebore was struggling in a different spot. So I've had to move it a couple times and it's happy year. So I do have to cut off that piece, but otherwise it's doing really good. So I'm proud of it. That hydrangea over here is a transplant. Um, God knows where I, which part of the garden I got it from, but it's probably from up front. I think it was getting crowded out by the oak leaf. We have spirea here that's blooming. Spirea is uh, Old Faithful. I have an Old Faithful in the back too. That one's huge but I'd be trying to get rid of it and it'll never go nowhere. Uh, 
Got a little bit of a hosta there. More spirea. This is a curly leaf variety of spirea that I love. I think I'm going to have to get some more and just fill out this whole area. And then there's just hostas as usual. I love me some hostas. I mean, you just can't go wrong. And then on this one, this is a red stem variety as well of a plant. Hi, little ants. See? Isn't that nice? I think there's a little baby slug or something right here. I'm not worried about him. I usually don't have many slugs, so if he wants to sit there and eat on it a little bit, he can. Oh, look at this, a football. This is great. <laughs> it's a deflated football. I know. And so as you see here, this bright, gr bright chartreuse green hosta is crowding out this hydrangea I just got. Um, so I'm going to have to move that hosta. I'm not moving it now. It's kind of warm and humid, so uh, by this fall, I'm going to have to move it because it's, it's massive. And I didn't think it was there. It wasn't there when I put that hydrangea in, so. Or what I just, or I didn't notice it. <laughs> That's possible. Oh, goodness. So who knows? Who knows? So it's just my lovely house corner with a few weeds. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> We're scared of bugs. Leave us alone. <laughs> so this is my little patch of Rebecca. Uh, it comes back every year and it spreads slowly. So if you like Rebecca, I suggest you get some. Oh, ooh. okay. Those birds were fighting, but I love this stuff. This stuff is just so beautiful. Like I don't have to do anything. I come back every year, spread a little bit, sow a little seed. Give me some free plants. I like it. Beautiful Japanese maple. Don't ask me the variety, but we know it's a Japanese maple. That's all we need to know. <laughs> Big ass hosta. A little poison ivy to help you out right there. I'm not allergic to it. I, you know. You don't know if I am. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, eventually I'll pull that up. I'm not worried about it right now. Nice weeping uh, Japanese maple. This one is more of a spreader. It's not going to get huge. And whenever you have, see different types of leaves coming out, you need to go, I'm going to have to go ahead and cut this off because this is totally different than what's growing right here. So I'll cut that piece. So this one has been, is just a waterfall Japanese maple. So this is probably the biggest this has gotten. This is a hydrangea. And it is a, grows on new wood. And so I love it. It has um, kind of reddish stems as well. I think this is a, either a strawberry fields or strawberry vanilla. But you know, in the South, because it gets so hot, we don't get the variety of color. So mine just tends to get more rosy colored than the uh, actual cream to rose color. That looks like a lollipop or something like that. So I don't get the benefit of that because I'm so far in the south. Then we just have an old peony. That was a festiva, which is a white with like dots of red in it. Some more red buckia. Got a whole bunch of day lilies uh, growing around this red bud. And this is a uh, weeping red bud. I have the variety written down somewhere, but... It gets uh, lovely rose-colored blooms in this very early spring. And then this is just a mass of daylilies, all different colors. So I have good old-fashioned Stella Dioro. Then I have some pinks. I have reds. I have oranges. The oranges will come out uh, probably this year, and I may put them up front uh, where we, you know, put garden refuse and stuff so the the plan is eventually i don't know if you all can see but I have little shrubs these are these are slow growers so eventually the shrub is going to get um to about five feet and so it'll fill up this whole area that way i'll have a little bit more garden structure than just having day lilies and irises the irises will move eventually to some other spot but for right now, I like the mass of uh, leaves and how it's flowing. It almost looks like a sea 
of plants. More irises, more daylilies. This was uh, my first year having salvia in after uh, not having it for a while. I don't know why, I just didn't have it. And this is my volunteer rose. I think this is a, um, a new dawn that was planted years ago. When we moved in, this flower was here. And so no matter how much you dig, you can never get it all out. So I just let it do what it do. And it's definitely a rambler. It just, it just keeps going. I hardly deadhead it. You know, I pull out some weeds and I pull out like little vines and stuff, stuff that's growing from it, but I don't really uh, worry about it. Ground covers, I tend to like flocks. And this is a spreading or, um, yeah, the spreading flocks. They get about 18 to 24 inches. And so they'll fill up this whole area once they mature. It's, and they have beautiful pink and lavender colored flowers. I kind of mix them up so because I don't really care about having everything matchy-matchy. I just love the color. And these roses here are grand, you know, floribundas. I think they're floribundas. And I have three of them to match. These I just cut back, so that's why we don't have any blooms on them. more day lilies and if you have day lilies I, I really do suggest that uh, if you don't have day lilies what I suggest is that you get some so a lot of people think of day lilies as just the yellow Stella de Oro like this one right here which you know you're gonna get a nice bloom for a couple weeks and then it goes away but day lilies come in a variety of sizes and colors and you just can't go wrong they like shade they like Sun it just doesn't matter they're gonna do what it do and this one if I cannot stab myself, what is this? Oh, this is a Francis Milan. Okay, so these three roses that's up here in this garden bed are Francis Milan. And I want to say Francis Milan is a grand, she might be a grandiflora. It's not a floribunda because grandifloras tend to have the longer stalks, uh, uh, and a floribunda tends to have. A whole bunch of florets at the end like five uh clusters so i think this is a grandiflora um and so you don't get the more sh it's not shrubby like um uh, it's not a shrub rose so you just you really getting it for the specimen plant and then of course my lovely lambs here watch a step uh, it got beat up a little bit from the storm and stuff, so, but I don't worry about lamb's ear. Lamb's ear is a tough plant, so I definitely advise getting that. So, here are my tomatoes. And I cover up my tomatoes because I have so many uh, pests that want to eat on them, including the birds. So this is a shrub variety. This is a better bush, and it's a hybrid. It's got a lot of uh, flowers on them, and it's got some uh, marigolds, got some rosemary. And so eventually with this, I'm going to have this coming all the way down so that the so it can uh, flow out. Because it's a shrub variety, so it needs to spread a little bit. So I'm going to have to get some more and have it come down this way. We'll go over this way. I haven't cleaned up from the storm, but, you know, it's all good. Look at that. You can almost smell it walking up to it. I love it. It's so pretty. <laughs> also, Easy Paprika from Jackson and Perkins. And these are just so cute and fluffy. And this is the most success I've ever had with these mini roses. As long as I leave them alone, they're going to grow good. The minute I touch them, I done messed up somewhere. I love them. Okay. So now we're over here in the raised bed. So this one has my lettuce in it. And so I've been keeping this covered. I'd already been cut off on some of the lettuce. And um, I have some stuff growing. I have no idea what, <laughs> what it is. I forgot what I threw in here. But I have beans. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can make that work lavender i have different kinds of uh 
lettuce in here, and of course my marigolds. But as long as I keep it covered, I can directly eat out of this thing, I swear. But I get bad pests sometimes. And you know, I'm kind of I'm trying to be as organic as possible and I'm at 99% probably. And, um, and so this cloth helps me stay that way because I really don't want to use any kind of sprays and stuff on my food if I can help it. I have a whole bunch of, uh, I know for a fact I have echinacea, rosemary, dill, uh, nasturtiums growing in these, the ah, and, the, and stuff. My, um, I need a bigger obelisk for this. This thing is just massive. It's my uh, Jackmanai clematis or clematis, depending on who you are and how you want to pronounce it. This is just a huge row of daylilies because they're daylilies and they're great. Uh, I think these are all pinks and and some reds, I think. Then here's my peppers. They are babies everywhere. I love it. We're going to have peppers. Look what at kind of pepper is that? This one I actually bought, and this is a, uh, this is a sweet pepper. Mm-hmm. And then my little nasturtiums coming up. And I can't believe they're actually coming up because I have horrible luck with growing nasturtiums in North Carolina. They don't, they just don't do well for me here. Um, I think I have some zinnia and some other stuff. Here's my corn. <laughs> this is my second year. Hopefully, whatever attacked them last year does not attack them this year. We it was ants last year. Yeah. No. But I think it was because I had potatoes and corn together. And on one of the pages I follow, she says, do not put those together. So um, they have the same pest issue. So uh, some of the stuff growing in the back is volunteer plants and ivy. So you ain't got to look at that. Anyway, um, yeah, I have a mixture of everything up here. Dill, nasturtiums, marigolds. It's just a butterfly. Oh, okay. <laughs> a little more. <laughs> I was just trying not to get in the way. I was trying to fall. Oh goodness. Okay, so over here I had replanted some roses. The reason that everything looks as messy as it does is because I have a dog named Coda. And Coda came up here and completely destroyed and stepped all over my roses. But if Sydney can zoom in on the rose over there and the rose right here, they're both coming back from his torture. So uh, at some point this fall, or maybe at the end of the summer, when it, whenever it cools down, I'll get in here, clean it out real good, and see the progress that they've made. But I see new growth on one of the roses, actually both of them. Um, yeah, okay. And my irises are bouncing back. Coda got mad at uh, my husband because my husband has a drone and he has a motorcycle and whenever those things are on Coda loses his mind so um but I'm gonna keep this rose even though it doesn't have scent but the one in the corner does have scent and that's a yellow uh golden showers that I bought tw about 20 years ago but I ignored it in the backyard I have my clematis this is Nellie Moser uh and she's old faithful she's been here about 15 years I'm surprised she's blooming again because last year she did not uh, I have no idea which this one is, but I like it. <laughs> Y'all know me. I also have uh, some sedum growing over there. Uh, I just cleaned that little area out, and so after the storm, those got beat up. So whatever growth they had is gone. Yes, there's a lot of weeds, but you know they're not harming nothing, so they're going to stay there. They look kind of cute to me. Uh, irises, of course. I'm always going to have irises. These are getting ready to uh, bloom again, actually bloom. These did not bloom this year, so you see the stalks, how huge and thick they are. They're getting ready to bloom. Then I have irises over here. All the colors are uh, different. Some, I literally have one that looks almost black. Uh, these are deep purple. These may bloom this year. They gotten, they've gotten a lot bigger since I bought them a couple months ago, so we're going to see. They may give me a bloom. They may not. I don't care. Uh, these two roses right here are coming out at the end of the season. They have no scent whatsoever, like no scent. Um, they bloomed profusely, though. They were beautiful. But the whole purpose of me having roses on this fence 
was so that I, that when you walk past to come to the house, you would have something to smell, something, you know, stop and smell the roses, and there's nothing. Uh, these two pots are just there just for me to have until I figure out what I want to do. This is a, I, I think this is the Roma tomato. Oh, there's a bug. Where? Mm, right there, but I think that's just the husk. So we're just going to ignore that. So yeah, this is a Roma tomato. I bought this one too. Some of these I bought, some of these are starts. Uh, I don't care. I don't, I'm not one of those people who are like purists and I only grow my stuff because sometimes I just don't have luck. Uh, and this year I did not. I'm keeping this one really covered really well because I just don't want pests. And as you can see, pests are all up in here trying to get in and they're dying. So good. I didn't do nothing to them. I just want you to know that. But these are Roma tomatoes. So this is my first time growing Romas. Usually I grow cherry tomatoes, which there's a patch of cherry tomatoes up front. So we'll talk about those in a minute. But this is my first time with Romas. How much different can it be, right? <laughs> yes. And the basil actually has some purple on it too. Purple basil. Oh, I see it. Yay, I know. You might have to cut some of that and take some home. I think I have the Dota... Uh, Dolce La Vida, though. I think I have some. Okay. So I planted these three roses here. Um, these are different than the others. <clears throat> you know, I just pick up stuff. Um, oh, the shot. <laughs> wow. I know. Um, yeah, I like getting my hands dirty. That's why I get it from. Anyway. <laughs> this is a Parfuma Summer Romance. Um, this one is, I believe, a yeah, this is a Floribunda. So, um, these I just planted. I have not made the beds for them. I just stuck them in the ground. Okay. And yes, I just throw the tag. Yeah, I just throw the tag there. Uh, my husband leaves it alone, but he did not leave the lavender that was growing next to it alone. It's a new bed, so, you know, I haven't really dug out anything. This is pretty much how I do it. I find a spot where I want to put them. I dig a hole, throw the plant in there, and then I'll worry about other stuff later. Is that the third one? Yes. And this is the third one. I actually made the bed for this one. So as you can see, it's been weeded and stuff already. Pretty. Mm-hmm. I, I, I know. <laughs> it's like tilting to the ground. Okay. No, Watch your step over here because it's... What's this? Just a boxwood. Yeah. yeah. It'll eventually, the box was, I have some in my little thing right here. So I have two over here and then one right here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I have some bee balm right there in front. It's the three little patches. Mm -hmm. So the bees will love that. Uh, but of course, the butterflies do too. And so with the boxwoods, they'll eventually get big enough and I can shape them into little balls. And that'll look cute. I think that'll look real cute especially once I get the those old roses out. And the roses didn't do too good on the fence right here, I think because uh, we just didn't have as much sunny days. I mean, it's been really rainy or it's been cloudy or it's been cloudy, rainy. Like so, today. yeah, like today. So, you know, it's not normal. We got a little garden friend, you guys. It's a little moth, but he's cute. He got a little yellow, got a little white on him. And this is our Nellie Moser. He's having fun on Nellie Moser. So I cut Nellie Moser back really hard uh, this year. And as you can see, she has a few ye yellow leaves, but I'm not really worried about it. I mean, we've had a lot of rain and shade. So, you know, if she had full sun like she normally would, like last year, she wouldn't have any yellow leaves. So I'm not worried about it. Don't fly at me, Mom. I know. I don't want her screaming and, and I'm attached <laughs> to the phone. How about I just drop the phone and then you... Oh, my God. <laughs> I know that was all on there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And so uh, these roses are all the same. So all these are going to come up. Uh, that's a weed, so that'll come up. <laughs> that'll come up, too. Um, and I just planted these day lilies here. Don't ask me what color they are. I think they're pink or red. They're not yellow. I know that much. This is a peony. This one is, oh no, it's not. This is the, <laughs> it goes so 
over there. So that's for my uh, cone flowers, which look like Rebecca. So if you know anything, they're not in the same family, apparently, uh, even though they grow and kind of look the same, the leaves look kind of same. But these are all pinks, uh, pink uh, cone flowers. Uh, this is a huge cone, uh, peony. Don't ask me where I got it from. It's someplace in my yard. So all the peonies that you see in the yard are peon. Oh, what? the rose just went over and said, hey, I'm going to grow the way you want me to grow. Oh, I had the rose attached to the tree at one point. So let me see if I can Please be careful. I know I stabbed myself last time. Ah, I'm stabbing myself. OK. Oh, I see. You can put it in the yeah. middle of those. I'll do it in a second. Stop. Yeah, yeah, we'll worry about that later. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, so all the peonies that I have are from my yard, except for one. I think it's either this one or, or another one I have. <laughs> and I just bought this um, sedum when we were in Lake Lure. And if you guys watch the shorts, you know I have a, uh, some garden tour videos of the a flower and bridge in Lake Lure. And if you ever get to North Carolina, go to Lake Lure, and the, it's just a whole bridge full of flowers. So we have Climbing Joseph's coat over here. I left the tag on, but I don't think I'll ever forget this plant. I, I love this uh, rose, and it's doing really well. I had one before that was a climber, and I never took planted it right, and I just abused it, but it's doing really good. So, uh, Day lilies, yes, I put yellows over here because I have this canna here. The canna is going to have red flowers, I believe, so I just wanted to contrast there. Usually I don't care about how they contrast with each other because everything just kind of flows, but I did that purposely. And so I'm glad that the day lilies are coming up the way they're supposed to be coming up. I do need to split those up and move it over here so it fills in this area, but I'll do that at, in the fall. But I just wanted to see how they were gonna flow up. Uh, the birds are really upset today. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a tree peony. Uh, and the leaves are almost the same as just a regular peony, but this is so much sturdier. And as you can see, it's, I don't know, it has more of a woody base. Um, this one, not really because you can't really see it. But when I first got it, it had a more woody base, but I had to cut it back kind of hard. And then we have a big old butterfly bush. I think this is a midnight version, blue midnight, something, something weird like that. It's blooming on the other side of the fence. Really? Mm -hmm. It has a few like purpley like. Wow, colors. look at it. But eventually, you know, this is his first year really. Um, because I bought this and it was literally like, I got a three inch plug from the grower. Um, but it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. I love this plant. And of course my little trees right here are crepe myrtles. And no, I don't murder them. But this gets hot pink flowers on it. I love it. Some more f creeping flocks. We have a whole mass of peonies, irises, this is Zephyrin Druin, or Drowin Druin uh, Rose. It gets hot pink flowers. This is the same butterfly bush that's over there. This is, uh, it's not doing as well, but it's still growing. So I'm, I'm not gonna do anything to it. A mass of reblooming irises. These are all yellow. I'm gonna have to redo this whole patch because they keep spreading. They're spreading like heavily. This, these are some uh, daylilies that I had before, and this is called Bella Lugosi. So I wanted to show you guys. Look how completely dark. When I tell you, in when these blooms come up, hopefully um, I'm a decent enough gardener that I take pictures for you, uh, and I'll post them to my Instagram. But the deep burgundy color on them are amazing. That one's gonna bloom first in the back. Yes. Look at that. Awesome. The mailman's coming, so we're going to stop real quick. So now, oh, I, okay, so you all, I'm getting ready to start with this hydrangea, but I just happened to look over, and this one is completely, I had no idea. We've been in the house with the storms, and look at this. This is, oh, they're going to be more coral, well, not corally, but iridescent colored by next week, and this will be 
Oh my gosh, I cannot believe it. Look how big it got. So this is the third year, I think. I think so. I think it's the third year. And so this is doing pretty good. And so at the end of this year, I'm not going to cut it back to the ground like I usually do. Because usually I cut it all the way to the base. So what I'll do is I'll probably cut it and leave it maybe four inches so that I get more of the height from it. Because I really want them to be level with the fence so that they get that sun in the morning. Because as you can see, they're leaning towards where the sun comes. Then, of course, I got my hibiscus. Is there something going on there? Mm -hmm. What is it? That little bug. He's like, I'm enjoying my life. Leave me uh, alone. Mm -hmm. This is ice plant. My ice plant survived the winter. Uh, this is a great plant, a great ground cover. So, uh, and it's always cheap wherever you go to just get some. And you can literally peel off a, pick off a piece and stick it in the ground and it will grow. So that's free plants for you. I'm going to steal a piece. I know, right? <laughs> yes. And then this is my puckster. Uh, my puckster got beat up, but it's coming back. So I'm not worried about it. I really need to get two more because these things are awesome. When they bloom, they're just beautiful. Wait, so what is that hydrangea back there that we get? It's the same thing as this. Okay. They're all this, no, there's three. I don't know what that is. It's a hydrangea. Yes, it's a hydrangea. It's a smooth, it grows on new wood, I know that. I know that's terrible, but you know. Wait, so where's that peony? Uh, this peony is right here. Yeah. So, is it living? But I think it's probably buried too deep. Mm. You know, I just throw the thing down on the ground. I don't care. It'll be all right. Uh, no, my garden is not perfect like nobody else's is. There's a, I got a coneflower growing over I right here. What, that was. <laughs> I was like, what is that? It's a coneflower and a weed. Wait, let's see. So here's part of the hydrant. Let me get rid of the weed so you can see. So Do we yeah. know what color that one is? Uh, it's probably pink. Uh. Maybe. Um, day lilies. Not that bad there. And then this back here is the Bernera I planted this year. So I put that on Instagram. And I think we had it on one of the other tour videos. Uh, it's it looks dusty and gray because and dirty because it is. That storm did a number on everything, but it's growing really good. It likes this spot. So I'll probably cut back that little stalk back there because the, the flowers are finished blooming. But it, it's doing really good. So now that I see that it's growing well in this yard, maybe I'll just have Brunnera back here. I think that'll be pretty because it gives a nice bright color. It's in the shade where it wants to be. So yeah, there's ants everywhere but it's all right so thank you <laughs> so this is another of the smooth hydrangeas this has more buds so I think it's because it's taller that it's getting more sun now so I don't have to worry about it anymore because before it wasn't getting as much sun here's another hydrangea don't ask me where that came from in a hosta yeah and this is two hostas oh, I believe God. yeah this is one and that other one back there that's a little smaller one Oh, oh, see, I've been picking stuff out for the last three or four days. And so here are my um, Hakonokloa or Hakoni grass. It's a Japanese grass that it grows naturally in Japan. I got three of them. Uh, thank you, Sydney. That was a great Christmas present. <laughs> or is that birthday? Birthday. Okay. <laughs> and just some more day lilies I have right here. This is... Uh, mondo grass that i already had growing yeah so that's the end of the video um and so of course if you have guys have questions and so these are my grow bags i just kind of sat them in the yard uh the fluffy stuff in there is not really mulch it's more it's like a um it's the hamsters yeah <laughs> it's it's the it's the bedding for the hamsters <laughs> it's probably not good for it but it's doing its job and the, and the plants seem to be happy i don't know so Got my basil. Uh, it looks like it needs some uh, fertilizer, which I just did. And so this tomato is a cherry. This is the Husky Cherry Red. Here's my potatoes. I grabbed a potato out of the fridge. I've been having it uh, sitting in the window and it had a whole bunch of eyes on it. And this is what I got. So I do have some carrots back there, but they're not doing as great. 
I don't know if the storm did that or what, but I have a few growing. And I know it takes a while for carrots to get going, but they're all through there. Uh, and then I have a pepper. I have Anaheim hot peppers. Yes. And so uh, in the original uh, welcome to my garden video, and we can walk around and talk to everybody. Um, so I, my biggest thing whenever people ask me, you know, about doing things, the first thing I say is who, what, when, where, how, and why. Um, and so I usually just ask who's going to be in your garden, who's going to be doing the gardening, and who's actually going to get the work done in the garden as far as starting it are you going to hire somebody you know the who of who's in your garden like if you have pets that kind of affects you know uh the kind of plants that you plant and you know do you need to keep those plants away from your pets from small children etc etc blah 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 the what is what are you planting what is your design style formal informal vegetables do you need raised beds you know, uh, things like that. And that also goes into the who, because if you have somebody like with the raised beds, I have mine are low, but if you have, uh, Oh, look, he's back. Um, oh, righty then. So like my raised beds are a little bit lower, but if you have somebody who has knee issues, a disability that prevents them from getting that low to work in their bed, then you may need to get something higher that's actually on legs. And they sell those. Uh, so I think Epic Gardener has a whole line of stuff. Uh, or you can just, you know, go on Amazon if that's your choice. I mean, you can go anywhere. Uh, tractor Supply, um, Lowe's. <laughs> you can go anywhere. I don't, you know... Uh, I'm not getting paid by any of these people to say this stuff, so I'm just putting it out there because that's the places I go to. Um, Gardener Supply also, they have a lot of good, great stuff. Um, who, what, when? Uh, when are you going to have time to do this gardening? Uh, that may limit some of the stuff that you're able to grow uh, because if you're a person who travels for business and you're constantly out uh, or away from home, then having a, a vegetable garden is probably not the best idea for you you know, unless you have the the things set up for it. Um, where is, where are you located? What is your zone? So we do have the zone uh, link in our description, and that will tell you where your zone is uh, in the country. It is very important that you have your zone so you'll know what you can grow. Um, zoom out a little bit so you can get that. I love that. I got a little statue in there somewhere, but you know. Kind oh, of look at the new world. I'm gonna have to cut this back hard this year. It always crowds out these day lilies. I know they be like, look now. Who, what, when? I already said when, like timing, where? Who, what, when, where, how? How are you gonna get it done? Are you gonna pay somebody? Are you gonna do it yourself? Who, what, when, where, how, and why? Why are you gardening? Are you doing it to keep up with somebody else? Which in some points you do have to, because if you're in a neighborhood, everybody take care of the yard and yours look like crap, believe me, your neighbor's gonna let you know. Uh, but with that being said, if you're just trying to keep up with the neighborhood and you're really not a gardener, there's always curb appeal type plants that you can put out there so that if you're just not a gardener type person that you can keep up with your neighbors without um, having to expend energy on something that you just don't enjoy. So never feel pressured to do a garden uh, just because your neighbors are that way. Just provide curb appeal, put some beautiful shrubs in, put some plants that you don't have to do no work with and keep it moving. Otherwise, if you're doing it because you really want to get into gardening, you found satisfaction with it. There are a million resources online that are free. There are books at your local bookstore that are on clearance. It don't matter if it's three or four years old, gardening don't change. Things need water, they need light and they need food, and you're good. And you can get more specific from that. So uh, thank you guys for joining me today. And we'll do an outro right here on this beautiful Japanese maple. You guys have a great day, and thanks for stopping by. <music>